Arminius and His Teachings Arminius stood uncompromisingly for sound doctrine and believed in the infallibility and inerrancy of the Bible as inspired by God. He rejected the Mass as a denial of the truth and excellence of the sacrifice of Christ. He joined in calling the Pope the adulterer and pimp of the Church, the false prophet, the enemy of God, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, that most notorious outlaw who shall be destroyed at the glorious advent of Christ, and urged all true believers to engage in the destruction of popery as they would the kingdom of Antichrist. And he endeavored to destroy popery by his lucid and powerful preaching of the gospel and sound doctrine from God's word. Arminius recognized and rejected the false doctrines of Augustine for what they were. In contrast to Augustine, Arminius also rejected the Apocrypha and authority of tradition. He believed in the eternal sonship of Christ, co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and the Holy Spirit, that Christ came to this earth as a man, that he was Jehovah of the Old Testament, who died for our sins, paying the full penalty by his one sacrifice of himself on the cross, that he was buried, rose again, and ascended to heaven, that man is hopelessly lost and bound by sin, and that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Arminius preached that salvation was entirely through Christ as a work of grace, which God alone could do in the heart. He categorically denied the false charges made against him of Pelagianism and Socianism. He also, with these words, defended himself against the false charge that he taught the doctrine of falling away. For I never taught anything contrary to the word of God, or to the confession and catechism of the Belgic churches. At no period have I ceased to make this avowal, and I repeat it on this occasion. Yet, since a sinister report has for a long time been industriously and extensively circulated about me, and since this unfounded rumor has already operated most injuriously against me, I importunately entreat to be favored with your gracious permission to make an ingenuous and open declaration. Articles were circulated, as if they had been my composition, when in reality they had neither proceeded from me nor accorded with my sentiments, and, as well as I could form a judgment, they appeared to me to be at variance with the word of God. Twice I repeated this solemn asseveration, and besought the brethren not so readily to attach credit to reports that were circulated concerning me, nor so easily to listen to anything that was represented as proceeding from me, or that had been rumored abroad to my manifest injury. My sentiments respecting the perseverance of the saints are that those persons who have been grafted into Christ by true faith, and have thus been made partakers of His life-giving Spirit, possess sufficient powers or strength to fight against Satan, sin, the world, and their own flesh, and to gain the victory over these enemies yet not without the assistance of the grace of the same Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ also, by His Spirit, assists them in all their temptations, and affords them the ready aid of His hand, and, provided they stand prepared for the battle, implore His help, and be not wanting to themselves, Christ preserves them from falling." so that it is not possible for them, by any of the cunning craftiness or power of Satan, to be either seduced or dragged out of the hands of Christ. Though I here openly and ingenuously affirm, I never taught that a true believer can, either totally or finally, fall away from the faith and perish. Yet I will not conceal that there are passages of Scripture which seem to me to wear this aspect. And those answers to them which I have been permitted to see are not of such a kind as to approve themselves on all points to my understanding. On the other hand, certain passages are produced for the contrary doctrine of unconditional perseverance, which are worthy of much consideration. I am not conscious to myself 
of having taught or entertained any other sentiments concerning the justification of man before God than those which are held unanimously by the Reformed and Protestant churches, and which are in complete agreement with their expressed opinions. Yet my opinion is not so widely different from Calvin's as to prevent me from employing the signature of my own hand in subscribing to those things which he has delivered on this subject of justification in the third book of his Institutes. This I am prepared to do at any time, and to give them my full approval. For I am not of the congregation of those who wish to have dominion over the faith of another man, but I am only a minister to believers, with a design of promoting in them an increase of knowledge, truth, piety, peace, and joy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Staunch Calvinist R. K. McGregor Wright acknowledges that Arminius solidly affirmed the eternal security of the saints, although that doctrine was abandoned by his followers a few years after his death. Arminius is maligned and denounced today by Calvinists, while Augustine is praised, even while admitting that Arminius affirmed dogmatically that it is impossible for believers to decline from salvation. Dillow insists that Arminius believes salvation can be lost. J. I. Packer quotes with approval, Robert Trail, the Scottish Puritan, who wrote in 1692, The principles of Arminianism are the natural dictates of a carnal mind, which is enmity both to the law of God and to the gospel of Christ, and, next to the Dead Sea of Popery, into which also this stream runs, have, since Pelagius to this day, been the greatest plague of the Church of Christ, and it is like will be till his second coming. Sheldon, however, says, The doctrinal system of Arminius, who is confessed on all hands to have been a man of most exemplary spirit and life, was the Calvinistic system, with no further modification than necessarily resulted from rejecting the tenet of absolute predestination. A leading Arminian of the 19th century summarized his understanding of that doctrine. Arminianism teaches that God in Jesus Christ made provision fully for the salvation of all those who, by repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, accept the terms of the gospel, and all who thus accept are eternally saved. One could hardly argue with that statement. Yet Calvinists continue to accuse Arminius of teaching that salvation could be lost, and to label as Armenians anyone who disagrees with them. The same is often the case today.